should have been the Ulster in the AFC semi final. What a game of rugby, John Lennon. Well, they've waited long and hard for this. What a game we've had. It's the best contest between Munster and Leinster in decades. It came down to the fine margin in the end. Crowley, he just had the confidence to go for it. But uh, it's a, a phenomenal game. The second year in a row, Leinster, who've led the way throughout the URC all season, fall at the semi final hurling. But Munster, I think this is an endorsement of their management team. You mentioned Bert, you mentioned their fitness, their staying power, and uh, they got the reward today. What a game. Yeah, but it was a mixture of everything, Dolan, is an improved game plan, you know, better defence, but the old-fashioned heart, spirit, you know, going deep, finding a way, but they're not going against Clarkson. They ran from their own goal line, a great kick from Casey. They got possession back, and then they got this position for the drop goal. A phenomenal win for Munster. Leinster, with them, with their boots on, they have another match next week for trophy wear, silver wear, but what a win for Munster. What a win. Don't I ask you please for your player of the match. Well, I mean, there was in the balance right to the end. Charlie Natter was outstanding for Leinster, but for me, when it matters most, uh, Jack Crowley performed. He is my URC player of the match. And how fitting, the guy who dropped gold a la Ronan O'Gara and the famous Grand Slam in 2009. The celebration was the same as well. This guy, the future 10 for Munster, he delivered today. He started at 12, he moved into 10 when Healy went off, and he, how fitting that he got the winning drop goal. For Keith Earls, he has another day, and it's a URC final. Absolutely, and you know, he, he deserves it uh, to finish his career for Munster in a, in a final, maybe with Silverware. But go back to Crowley, that's the thing that people have been, who know him well have remarked about him for so long. It's his, his mindset, his mentality, and he showed it there. Clutch moment, yeah. I saw him play for Bandon Grammar a number of years ago up against the big boys CBC, PBC. He stood out head and shoulders about everyone. He has that temperament, he had the uh. Uh, uh, to be fair to Craig Casey, the pass from him was brilliant, the timing perfect, but Munster now, they go to South Africa, I'm not quite sure how they'll feel about this, but they, it's the third time in about seven weeks they'll be heading to Cape Town, but right now, I don't think that matters, they're absolutely thrilled. Well, who would have thought at the start of the season, you know, when the new coaching took it, took over, uh, obviously, we knew it was going to take time, but... Credit to Graham Roundtree and Mike Prendergast, Dennis Leamy, the entire coaching to do what they've done in one season, Donald. Yeah, I mean, look, um, you go back only four or five weeks, it was six weeks ago, you had that disastrous defeat by Glasgow in Thoman Park. Then they went down to the, uh, for the Heineken Cup, they got absolutely obliterated by the Sharks. But look what's happened since then. They took that, they responded, uh, beat Glasgow in last week in Scotstown. Glasgow hadn't lasted all year. They beat the Stormers in Cape Town, first time they lost in 21 games. So you add all those things up, and uh, I could see it close up with that group in South Africa. There's a bond there, they have, uh, they're delighted with the likes of Leamy, with Prendergast, with Roundtree, and you have to take your hat off to Roundtree. He was under pressure at various times throughout the season, but he kept the message the same. Munster never deviated from what they're doing. Um, you mentioned fitness, Birch, in terms of the way they were playing. I think that's probably the biggest thing that stuck to them today. Well, there you go. Emotional scenes. Keith Earls with his family on the pitch. Uh, smiles all round. None bigger than the URC player of the match. Jack Crowley is with Conor Morris. Thank you, Hugh. I'm standing by with Jack Crowley, today's BKT URC player of the match. Sure, Hayes will do the honours and present him with his award. Jack, many, many congratulations. Just try and tell me how exactly you're feeling right now. Oh, look, we're in a final. That's where you want to be. Um, yeah, haven't registered yet, but you have to give credit to Leinster today. You know, all week we knew the respect we have to give them as a quality side. They're not, you know, in the final next week for no reason. They're not here. The squad that they have, the, the quality that they have. So we have to give them the utmost respect. You saw what it took out there to to even beat them, you know what I mean? So to them, this is this is their place and, and uh, it's all due respect to them that they're an unbelievable side and it took everything that we had to beat them. So yeah, happy that we're in the final, yeah. One of the best Munster Leinster derby matches for many, many a long year, a couple of decades, Donald Lennon said, and you won it in the 70th minute with a drop goal in front of the post. What was going through your mind? Yeah, look, the moment itself is something, but 
it's more, you know, the 77 other minutes before that that the boys put in, the forwards coming around the corner, the effort that the backs put in, the 23 put in, and then the, you'll go beyond that to the lads back home that aren't even here on the pitch today, you know what I mean? It truly, that is what made today, you know what I mean? That moment that goes over the bar, that's what you practice for, you're, that's what you're there to do, you have to do that, but it's the effort that the boys put in far beyond the 23. So it's a it's an unbelievable squad effort, both coaching and, and squad. So that's what that meant today, you know what I mean? It was more than the moment. And very modest with it, of course, it'll draw comparisons with Ronan O'Gara, the pass from Stringer from Craig Casey. But what does it give you now going into a final and the momentum and the belief you now have? Oh, belief, you said it, you know what I mean? It's, it's there. It's there to, to be in a squad, like I said, of that quality today. It's everything, you know what I mean? It, it's everything to go. We want to be in a final and that's where we are, so... Just delighted with the effort today, but we really do. You know, we have next week to train. Um, it's going to be a tough competition and, and, you know, give it our all. And, and we're in the final, so that's where you want to be, you know what I mean? Massive congratulations. Well done, Jack. Very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jack Crowley, the man in red, the hero in red today, and our man in red up here in the studio, <laughs> Mr. Nicole Callahan. It's yeah. like a walk again. Incredible, incredible scenes from Munster. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to put it into words, I think. We would have might have, we looked at it maybe through uh, old monster eyes in terms of taking their points. Not for this team. Uh, they found a new way. They wanted to go win this game, and every uh, moment within it uh, led to that last uh, moment with Jack Crowley. And Claire, there's times you need a player to step up, and there's probably been a void for uh, for a while. But just the Lee Rodies to stand in the pocket there and knock it over the bar. Of course, Leinster are missing players. Munster could have only played what's in front of them, but. Uh, fantastic result and, and so, so proud not only of the result but the performance because this Munster team, as Graham Rountree said, is growing. They'll actually look back at that and see areas they can improve. Uh, but it was fantastic. Yeah, amazing scenes. I mean, beforehand, Graham Rountree said, be brave, had a go, That's his, have a go. That was his mantra. They certainly did that. And Jamie Heaslip, you even applauded at the end. Uh, credit was credit to you. Um, I mean, Leinster are favourites coming into it, 10 points from said. I was even saying, saying, you know, the Munster needed to do something special for this game, and they did something unbelievable. I mean, they've come here into Leinster's back garden, effectively, and um, they fronted up, they won the game line battle, they won the physicality, and then they had a bit of nous about them, they had a bit of smarts about them. And then at the end, for, for uh, Crowley to step up and take that shot, unbelievable. And then he gave the little finger wag a la Rome Nogara. But it's great, and I, I turn around to Dunners, seeing it, Keith Earls there with his kids on the field. Yeah, you know, it's special moments for, for players like him, players like Peter Armani. But uh, for the Leinster guys, it's a serious learning. You cannot take anything for granted. It, not that they didn't take it for granted, but, you know, You've, you've got a front up. Munster are a good side. Well, let's hear now from the winning captain, Peter Romani. Thanks very much indeed, Claire. Yes, Peter, incredible game. What a result for Munster rugby and brilliant scenes here at the Aviva. Yeah, important one for us. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we don't have a good record up here. Um, not the last few years, anyway. And um, look, it, it took a big performance from it from us um, you know a bit scrappy in the second half uh, struggled a bit at times discipline wise but we all went in there and and um, we gave ourselves a chance we, we were lucky um, I think Frawls missed, missed the conversion so it left us within three points and, and Jack had the balls to knock it over so here we go such a moment for such a young player in a cauldron like this, in an atmosphere like this against Leinster, to come up with that play. Yeah, massive, massive. Um, yeah, look, here we go. Look, at, I mean, we want another one, you know, we want one more game. This isn't the one we were looking for, but it was a big stepping stone for us. So um, I think we have a trip to South Africa now, have we? Yeah. So back down we go again. And, um, you know, it's great to have another week to to review and um, you know, another shot at it. As you said, it's taken you a long time to get a win against Leinster at the Aviva. You have, however, won in Cape Town. You've won away in Glasgow. You haven't lost on the road since last October. Hell of a game next week. Yeah, it is. Look, obviously, we caught them over there a few weeks ago and 
Um, you know, they'll be hurting after that because they, they've had a very good record before that. But look, it's a final, who knows? Congratulations. Thanks. Cheers. This was the moment of the match, a very special one for Jack Crowley and for Munster fans. His drop goal giving them a one-point win over their fierce rude rivals, Leinster. Craig Casey certainly enjoying the moment and taking some time out to take a selfie with the fans and Munster and Leinster fans here today, certainly making their presence felt. Really, it was a brilliant atmosphere uh, given it was a reduced crowd. So, Eddie, is it rivalry restored? The days of old are back. Yeah, I think for the most part. I think was, first say it was a phenomenal game of rugby, incredibly enjoyable. It, it was it was ebbs and flows on both sides, and it's probably the game of the season so far. And now we're a bit biased, yeah. but for us, <laughs> in the enjoyment. And I think when you stand back from it, Munster could have lost this game very easily, and would have been very upset with the way they played. They they butchered lots of chances. Um, they got sucker punched at the end of the first half. Then they came back. They scored early in the second half. Game back on. Then they, get, they had huge pressure. Couldn't convert it. Leinster scored. And you just felt at that stage the game was slipping away from Munster. But they hung in there. They hung on there. I said to the boys with 10 minutes to go, if Munster can stay one score back, they'll get a shot. And they got a shot. And the guy we said wouldn't get enough touches on the ball before the game got the vital touch at the end. And he put it through the post. So it's fantastic entertainment. I feel sorry for Leinster a bit, but it probably made their own bed. And if they lie in it now, but having said that, Munster won't complain, but it was a phenomenal game of rugby that could have gone either way, and yeah. I think Munster probably deserved to edge it in the end. It certainly is. Well, let's uh, get more reaction now. Connor is with Leo Cullen. Leo, commiserations. You've come out on the wrong side of a, a very, very tight game. Um, how do you see it? Um, yeah, it was a tight game. Yeah, like as we're, well, we're in the lead with a few minutes to go, and you know, credit to Munster, like they worked away from their end of the field um, and Jack Crowley you know, steps up and knocks over drop goal and we don't get another opportunity so um, it was a very close game um, like we talked about leading into the game beforehand so um, you know for us during the course of the game there was bits that we can definitely do better and you know, we had some young guys out there today and it's great learning for them pretty painful to go through it now but um, yeah no credit to Munster they uh, won the game fair and square they threw everything at you. You spent an awful lot of uh, that game on the defensive. Um, credit to your defence for holding out. And then to get your noses in front, did, did you feel you could get over the line? Um, yeah, like, and we had that penalty as well. I thought we were on top around scrum as well at that stage of the game. And yeah, like, we were disappointed we couldn't close out the game. But again, credit goes to Munster, you know, how they worked their way from that end of the field. A um, few passes stuck. And yeah, you know, as I said to Jack Crowley, stepping up to knock over that drop goal at the end. Um, yeah, no credit to them. And, best looked for them in the final end. Yeah, because not even to give them a penalty in front of the sticks in the 78th minute to force them to go for a drop goal. Fine margins all over the pitch. It was a great derby, great for, for URC to, to showcase that kind of a, a game. From a Leinster point of view, of course, you have another massive hurdle next week to pick yourself up for. Um, yeah, that's the thing. We've got to pick ourselves up pretty quickly now. So um, it's so difficult to do, isn't it now? So like to compete on two fronts. But um, yeah, we'll have some guys come back into the mix now this week. Um, and it's a huge challenge for us, you know. So it's amazing occasion out there in terms of support and um, hopefully it'll be an amazing occasion out next weekend as well um, but just when you see the opposition and what it means to them um, yeah it gives a good reminder now so for us um, so yeah anyway we're down to one competition now so everyone has to go into the next week appreciate your time as always thank you cheers guys Jamie, it's not often that Leinster's dressing room is the losing one. I imagine it's pretty silent in there, but as you've been saying, to fall again at the semi-final hurdle this year. Yeah, and, and Leo's kind of throwaway comment at the end that they should be reminded, uh, or it's nice to be reminded. I don't think they should need to be reminded uh, of the importance of what this is, the importance of getting silverware. Um, yeah, they've got a battle on, on two fronts, but now it's, you know all your eggs are in one basket. Um, if they don't deliver there, 
you know, questions will we have to ask in terms of the organisation of, of, of direction of travel um, and, and why we're not getting the return on the amount of investment that, that Leinster have in terms of resources around it. But that's for another day. That's for Monday morning review and all that and going forward there. I think for uh, months, this is all about Munster today. This is all about Munster now ploughing on into the, um, into the final, getting a trip down to, to Cape Town, like Pete said, just going down there, as he said. Um, and kind of you know flipping the script pretty quickly. Yeah, enjoy the moment now, but flip the script and get focused on the, on the final. We are joined by a very special guest up here now, Graham Roundtree is here. Graham, congratulations! You've really shaken things up and upset the odds. <laughs> shaking things up, my nerves are shaking. I, don't know that. <laughs> um, I thought we'd blown our opportunity at the end of the third quarter when we're on the goal line here. We coughed the ball up, but then some immense defence to keep a great team out. No, it's it's huge for us that. It's huge for us. Pete, Pete just spoke very well in the dressing room, said that that can't be our final. We go down to Cape Town with a lot of belief. One thing we have learnt is a lot of belief. We've had a tough run, five games away from home, been some tough places and won games without being perfect. Still growing again, but we we'll take a lot of belief from that and looking forward to Cape Town. Yeah, you, you like it down there, don't you? I like You've the wine well. down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do, we do. We, we had a good, a special couple of weeks down there last time. Uh, we came back unbeaten, so... No, it's a huge, another huge challenge for us, but we're ready for it. Amazing scenes at the end there. We saw the players with their family, the likes of Keith Earls, who we thought we'd seen the last of in a red jersey, really, really enjoying this occasion. Yeah, it's special times for the club. Now, those older players, they won't mind me calling them older players, they're pulling this young group along. Talk to us about this season, because it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it? I mean, at the start, not many were predicting you'd be, you'd be here at this stage. It's another best start to the season, so I would agree with that. That wasn't the plan. No, we're learning, we're adapting, we're learning, still growing a game, finding out about people. But the big word all along has been belief, sticking to the plan. You know, we come here battle-hardened as well, off some very, uh, very tough away games. And I think that showed at the end, I think it showed at the end. Yeah, it certainly did. Champs, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, Grim, just for me, I suppose the old Munster mentality of thinking is take your points when they're available, but we saw your team putting it in the corner and from the start of the game, backing themselves, that belief that they could get it done. Sorry, I've just noticed your red shoes. <laughs> <laughs> They're a thing of beauty, the aren't eye they? Eye-watering. Um, <laughs> no, you've got to be brave. You have to score tries, particularly against a team like this. Points is not enough. We want to be brave. The way Mike's got us attacking now, spoke about it all week, being brave, taking our opportunities. We could have done with taking a few more. You know, We weren't that clinical, on, particularly around our line-out. And more, we lost the ball up there and we lost the ball here in, in the third quarter. But no, I, I want us to be that team being challenging and being brave. We get um, question on Leams and the impact he's had on defence because they say defence wins your championships and it was immense, particularly on the line. We saw Gavin Coombs there with the rip. Yeah. Um, can you tell us the impact that he's had in the in the group, but also on the system and how you're defending? A bit of both, really. System-wise, he's, he's excellent. But now the lads, the lads all believe him. He, he's very good. He's got an aura around the group from what he did as a player. But he's an excellent coach. Very, uh, very technical. Doesn't overdo things. Clear messaging. But, he, you know, we do a lot of that goal line stuff in training in the week. And there's a balance to how you train. You know, as yourself, lads, you can't do a lot of contact these days. So you've got to try and replicate that two in the tackle, that goal line stand. But no, Leans, he's, he's been immense for us this season. 